Hello again, rail fans. You know, if you're like me, you do most of your rail fanning alone. It's just the way the hobby has evolved. But once in a while, you get to go out and join some folks on an organized train hunt. Such was the case for me in August of 2021. It was Woody Harrison's Atlanta Rail Fest, a guided tour to Woody, some of Woody's sweet spots across northwest Georgia, mostly places I'd never seen. Now, Woody's style isn't just to shoot trains once. He chases them down and catches them over and over again as they pass photogenic spots that he has already picked out. Now, when I first met Woody in the 1990s, his nickname was the Real Train Chaser. And over the next few minutes, you're going to see how he got that nickname. And what made this day even better was the inclusion of a whole new generation of rail fans who were experts on this territory. So let's pack up. Get out there and have some fun. Cartersville, Georgia, 7.30 a.m. on an August morning. Woody Harrison is conducting a briefing for today's train chase. What we could see and what it would look like when we got there. Tommy Thornhill from Fort Valley brought his own cooler, but no beer. Did you bring the beer? <laughs> that looked like enough for everyone in there, Tommy. <laughs> there you go. Oh, look at that. Beaches. Peaches. All right, there ain't nothing better than cold Peach Georgia peaches. This was an invitation-only event. Any more than about eight on a train chase like this becomes unwieldy, and we would be in four vehicles. This morning, we are rail fanning the CSX Cartersville sub. Woody is coordinating the motorcade by GMRS radio. We've all got walkie-talkies. Uh, we could park on the other side, couldn't we? I'm thinking that might be easier, especially for uh, Matt. Yeah, let's do that and then we'll just walk back over here on this side. I'm also listening on the VHF scanner for any intel on train movements. But I really don't know what I'm listening for. I'm in foreign territory. Our first stop was a wide open spot with a fill covered with Georgia kudzu and a two-lane overpass. This is the CSX WNA line to Ackworth, Kennesaw, and Tilford Yard in Atlanta. But someone in the group caught some radio traffic that told us nothing would be by here soon. So we'd better move to someplace else if we wanted to see yeah. any trains. I think the best way would be to go for downtown. Okay. Just go on the other side of the Because tracks. we're going to North Yard. Okay, let's yeah. do that. Well, and, yeah, and if anything comes out of nowhere or surprises us, we're right there near track side. So. We went back into Cartersville on the CSX WNA sub, where we knew southbound Q541 would be working the yard there. We set up on the Porter Street Bridge, about a mile north of where we all met up this morning. With all these cameras on the bridge, passing drivers must have thought that the president, or maybe one of the Kardashians, was down there. 541 is a daily freight that originates out of Cincinnati and works Cartersville and then down to Union City and goes on to Waycross, Georgia. When we caught him, he was dropping some cars into the Cartersville North Yard. North Yard is one of three yards here in Cartersville. would have stayed a few minutes more to catch the switching, but I was the guest of still photographers this morning, so we were back on the road in just a minute or so after the locomotive passed underneath us. We headed back out to the Cartersville sub, ex-seaboard airline trackage from Cartersville to Rockmart. The target now was an empty coal train coming out of the power plant. As we headed down the winding Georgia two lanes, Woody in the truck ahead and Travis Newman two cars behind worked out the plan on the radio. Coming through that squeeze there on the S curve over the little bridge there. That's a nice morning shot if we can get there in time. But you know what I'm talking about? I do indeed. It's going to be tight though. Tight on time. 
I'm thinking so. Yeah, me and Joseph were discussing the same thing, so uh, we'll see what happens. But, uh, let's push it here and go as fast as we can on this stretch right here. We decided on a road crossing outside Georgia Power's Plant Bowen, a big coal-fired electric generating station that gets fuel by rail. The train, empty E302, was just coming out. Woody and Travis had figured it just right, sun directly on the nose of the locomotive. But what none of us could know was that Q541 train that we left in Cartersville was tying up the WNA main line while switching the yard. So while he was out there in the way, this E302 couldn't leave, and the dispatcher was holding him here. Stop. We waited another 10 minutes and we're back on the road. More tactical planning via walkie-talkie. I'm thinking that's going to be the best bet. We'll follow the old route in, and then that way we know we're not going to miss him, even if we don't beat him to Rockmark. Right. Well, he's already, according to Joseph, he's on the sixth. He's already on the Cartersville sub. He's already on this side of Rockmark. Our destination now was a private home that had the Cartersville subdivision running right across their front yard. Before we set up, though, a walk up to the front door and a polite ask for permission would be required. Anything less might get you a meeting with the county sheriff or something much worse. Besides, we were talking about common courtesy here. Woody would handle contact with the homeowner. He then explained why we were going to all this trouble. Well, you know, there's not much that runs on this line. And, and, and with the, 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 uh, the job, the 700 job, typically runs in the mornings uh, westbound toward uh, Cedartown. And it's very rare to catch it running eastbound in the morning with, with good light to photograph it with. Uh, occasionally they, they, they law or the train ties down in Rockmart or Cedartown, and then you get that eastbound move. But that you just can't ever plan on that or you know and, and it's uh, because there's not much movement or there any there's no uh, communication on this line you even if you're out here working you still may not find the train because it's just uh, unless you see the train or you know like uh, ahead of time and catch some discussion on the from the dispatcher you won't ever know this job's out here and so it's it's a really hard job to catch unless you can catch it leaving one you know the terminal at cartersville so uh, if, if we catch this guy going east this time of the morning, we're, we're going to really come home with a trophy. Things were really working in our favor this morning because almost exactly 10 minutes later, here came A700, the elusive Cartersville to Cedartown turn. And the tour guides had picked a killer spot, downhill, on an S-curve, in beautiful eastern morning light. A700 is pulled this morning by an EMD slug set. The 2356 leading is an engineless road slug with electric traction motors only. The trailing unit, a GP40-2, is a locomotive that's providing electricity for the slug as well as its own traction motors. When the engines passed, I was setting up for a second angle when I realized there was no one around me anymore. Those guys were already heading for the vehicles. I had forgotten we were on a chase this morning. We need to all be ready to get set up pretty quick. Um, what do you suggest, uh, Travis? On the road again and more decision making on the radio. This stop would be a cattle ranch close to the road and straddling the main line. I think that's a really nice farm rustic scene. I, I kind of like that scene. Well, let's do this then. Okay, well let's do that. Let's figure out the parking. Uh, should we pull into there or should we stay here on the side and walk down there? Park on the side and walk. Park on the side of the road we're on. There's the photographers all got up on the pasture fence for their shots. And the class clown always has to make a wise crack. Well, get off the fence and make up your mind. <laughs> we were all set to get that A700 again when here he came. And again, no sooner had the engines passed the crossing, 
the chase resumed. These guys are running again. Woody is living up to his reputation this morning, the real train chaser. We enter that farm in the S-curve. The massive power plant Bowen is visible along this subdivision nearly everywhere we go. We actually land at a crossing just outside the power plant for one last catch of A700. After this, Woody said the traffic would slack off for a little while and we should break for lunch. In keeping with the theme, lunch was in Rockmart at a place called the Pizza Depot. It's a restaurant right on the Norfolk Southern Chattanooga, Maine, with a great view of the track. None of us got pizza though, we all had sandwiches. I had an Italian sub kind of thing called the Hobo Special, and it was delicious. After some group pictures, we hit the road again. The afternoon chase would be on the Norfolk Southern Atlanta North District, a line from Inman Yard in Atlanta to DeButts Yard in Chattanooga, and running through some of the prettiest country anywhere. After checking out different locations for about half an hour, we lit down at a place on the map called Sini, about eight miles north and west of Rockmart. Coming at us was NS Northbound 174. At 1527, he showed up climbing the hill towards Rome with the engines wide open. When people ask me, why do you love trains? Scenes like this are part of the answer. Just listen. One seventy four is a mixed bag, some freight cars and some piggybacks. And some racks. Martin O'Toole in our group was down there away shooting video. When 174 cleared, we saddled up again and continued on northward as there were more northbound trains coming at us. The gang wanted to get the next train in another place. We came into a place that I recognized, Lindale. They've got a recently built train watching platform on the east side of the tracks. We opted instead for the church parking lot down on the west side, which is on the compass south side and in the sun. And soon here came northbound NS-282. Intermodal traffic out of Jacksonville, Florida headed for Chicago, Illinois. Three locomotives pulling eight spine cars carrying 53-foot FedEx trailers. Then a whole lot of well cars with J.B. Hunt and EMP containers double stacked. After 282, Woody and the group were already plotting the next move. The, the northbound empty coal train, BNSF coal train, that uh, it's got power on the head end and power on the rear end. We want to take advantage of getting both ends, but to do that, you got to be in the right location to get the sun. So we get uh, one spot for the northbound, the, the head end power, and then relocate around the curve so you can get the going away shot of the DPUs 
just in case they're facing the right direction to make it look like a second train. So that sun's on the nose of both ends. That's correct. Yep. Yep. And there's a curve down there between green and Sini that allows you to do that. But it would mean that we'll have to shoot the head in at Sini and jump in the car and push the envelope and run around to green to get the going away shot of the DPUs. Sounds like we're going to have to do some smoky and abandoned. A little bit, and we've done it before, oh, yeah. so it should be uh, it should be doable. Everyone's got a car insurance, right? Yeah. Yeah. Liability right. only. Yeah. <laughs> Liability only. That last was a reference to Twister, one of our favorite movies from the 1990s. Watch it sometime, and you'll get why we like it so much. We were only a little ways down the road out of Lindale when we heard another northbound call the signal just south of us. So we U-turned it right back to Lindale. It was NS-224, a few intermodal stragglers on the top, followed by auto racks coming out of southeastern Toyota's Westlake Yard in Jacksonville, destined for Avondale Yard in Kansas City. I couldn't tell if 224 was loaded or empty. A lot of Toyotas come into the port of Jacksonville from Japan, so those racks could be loaded. I wasn't sure. Now we moved south and set up for that coal train Woody spoke about earlier. The spot was the Donahue Road crossing, about four miles south of Lindale. It's tight in here, but it's nice because of the curve. The train was NS-733, empty coal hoppers from Memphis, Tennessee, and a bonus BNSF run-through train with foreign power, two big EMD SD-70 aces. 733 comes empty out of Georgia power plant Shurer near Juliet, Georgia, between Macon and Atlanta. They get two of these trains a day, sometimes up to five. Scherer is one of, if not the most powerful, coal-fired power plant in the United States, capable of producing 3,700 megawatts of electricity when it's running wide open. They use a lot of coal. Instead of making a dash around the curb to catch the DP engines going away, we elected to stay here. On the bottom of 733, two radio remote control distributed power unit shoving, another SD-70 ACE, and a GE ES-44AC, both of them BNSF, more run-through foreign power. Now another discussion of where to go next. Yeah, um, I don't mind that shot without the elevation, but that's that's totally up to you. I'm fine with that. Let's go try it and see what it looks like. Yeah, at least it's check nice it out. It's not that far away right, from Green anyways. Right, and it's not going to interfere. We can still yeah. go, we can continue southward on the old Rockmart Road to get to it if we decide to go somewhere else. So, yeah. yeah. Let's go, let's do that. I'm for whatever, I'm with you fellas. All right. Okay. The cool thing about this bunch was that every decision was put up for discussion with all factors considered. It made for a really fun day. The new location was another three miles to our south and through more beautiful North Georgia countryside. A two-lane road and not a Starbucks or a Panera Bread anywhere. Not that I don't like those places, they just always mark the edge or the end of rural life. And I still like the country. The spot was Bryce Station. There was no station here anymore, but the wide property where it was created a really nice photo setup. About 30 minutes passed, and here came NS370. More foreign power, with a UP SD70AH in the lead, followed by an NS-9 40CW, and an ET-44 AC, and an ES-44 DC. 370 is northbound mixed freight out of Inman Yard, Atlanta for DeButts Yard in Chattanooga.
Next up was NS-188, a northbound with two covered hoppers and a mix of loaded and empty racks out of East Point, Georgia for Detroit, Michigan. 188 will drop those two covered hoppers in Dalton, Georgia, a few miles ahead. That's for the Shaw Flooring Company. This is where I had to break off from the tour. I had plans with the family that evening, so I had to make my way back to Atlanta in Friday afternoon rush hour traffic. Two weeks later, Liz and I were coming back from a vacation in North Georgia and stopped at the very parking lot in Cartersville where Woody's tour began. I remembered a busy restaurant there called the Eight Track. How cool a name is that? Liz had chicken fingers with sweet potato fries, and I had fried fish with potato potato fries. Both of them were really good. Now to see what Woody's Rail Fest was like, say, 20 years ago, check out my video here on YouTube. It's called Austell, Georgia on my mind. We did the exact same thing back then, but that day we started out of Austell, Georgia, went out of there. You'll see whole lots of stuff that's just not around anymore. My thanks to Woody, Travis, Matt, Joe, Martin, Tommy, Wes, and Bailey for a fantastic day and for allowing me to tag along. Now, you notice I got a brand new sign back there on the fence. My thanks to Gordon Deason, who I told made it known that I wanted one. Also to Max Lender and both of those guys who told Vic Lewis who had one. And, uh, just drove up uh, at, a, at an event we were at recently and presented me with that, uh, that sign. Got it on the fence as soon as I could. So thank you, thank you, Vic Lewis. Much, much appreciated. Please hit the like button if you like this video. Put your comments in the comments section down below. I read all of them and try to reply to as many as I can. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done that. Um, hit the little bell down there. To be notified whenever I post a new video. So, until we meet up again somewhere out there on the high iron, this is Danny Harmon, out.